Friday, everyone. I'm Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. Nice to see you again. Yes, we are taping on Friday today. We'll be back yeah. to our Friday schedule. Yeah. You know, we've been doing this Saturday morning for a couple of weeks, and now we're back to Friday. Yep. I don't know. Yep. We can't make up our mind what day we want to podcast. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. We're flexible. Whatever it fits in. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good week? So, yeah, I had a, a good week. Yeah, uneventful. The weather's getting warmer. That's you know, kind of nice. You know, even though it's cloudy and drizzly today, mm -hmm. it's not cold. Right. You know, it's that, it's weird because, you know, this kind of damp can really, you know, it mm -hmm. can create a chill mm -hmm. just because it's just cold and damp, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't feel cold and damp. No, no. It's, it's nice. really weird. I just wait. I mean, mm -hmm. the blizzard's coming yet. <laughs> oh, you think we'll have one more? I just, I don't know. Maybe a little slushy mix one, but yeah. I think summer's just about here. I see daffodils and hyacinths all over. Yeah. So yeah, that means it's spring. Mine are coming up. I think mine will be blooming. Eh, maybe another week yet. If we, you know, if it stays warm like this. Mm -hmm. They'll be blooming in another week. And I'm pretty close to the lake. I have to get some daffodil bulbs. I only have tulips on the side of my house. And the tulips are, you know, this tall or so, the leaves. So that'll probably be two more weeks before they bloom. Well, I love tulips, but uh -huh. um, I have to grow daffodils because the deer eat the tulips. Oh, and you have pines. Yeah. Daffodils look really nice mixed in pines. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and, and, and the whole front of my yard, there's quite a bit of daffodil in there. Okay. Um, I, I that, But I put the daffodils in, and I chose daffodils largely because of deer mm -hmm. and that stuff. And, yes, they wander through my yard regularly. Yeah, so they do. They don't come by me. I get squirrels once in a while, a raccoon. Oh, a lot of rabbit. The rabbits eat stuff by me. Oh, they yeah, I get those too. They even ate a raspberry bush with all those prickers. The rabbits ate it down to the ground. I was like, that had to be awful. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. They t they were at it. So. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, we have red squirrels. Hate those buggers. And gray squirrels. Those aren't bad. Uh -huh. They're kind of fun. The worst. <laughs> now, those of you who don't know, my husband does pest control. He's a bug man. And, of course, within the world of pest control, um, you have rodent control. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm telling you, he has been in rodent control mode at home. Oh, yeah? Ah! Do you got a mouse in the house? No, no, no. It's no. all just in the yard? It's all in the yard. Okay. So, we have, okay, the red squirrels. He uh -huh. traps them buggers. Okay. Okay. Now, for those of us who wouldn't ever harm a flea, nah, you get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's either my patio furniture or the red squirrels. Yeah. I mean, I had red squirrels literally destroy a hot tub oh. that was on our deck. Oh, yeah. What they do, they get underneath there and where all the insulation, you know, to keep oh, the hot sure. tub, they tunnel through the insulation and then they store stuff. So when our hot tub gave up the ghost because we didn't know what was wrong with it, the motor died, it was because of these stupid red squirrels. <laughs> and so... Filled it up with nuts and acorns and stuff? Pine cones, because oh, remember, we got all those evergreens. Pine cones, okay. Yep, so our... Okay, so when there was no repairing said um, hot tub anymore, um, we decided to get rid of it. And I called a junk person to mm -hmm. come and they took chainsaws basically to it, cut it up mm -hmm. to remove it. And it was hysterically funny because w the way they were cutting it up, they would see where the stupid red squirrels tunneled <laughs> and stored. I mean, this whole hot tub didn't need insulation. It had so darn many pine cones in it and whatever. Probably it was like an ant farm when they sliced yes, it up, huh? <laughs> yes, same idea. Yes, the way the uh, ants tunnel in uh -huh. in an ant farm, same concept. Oh. And that's what my hot tub looked like. Oh, gee. Okay, so, yeah. Um, no, there is no being kind to red squirrels at my house. Yeah. They have tried to chew their way through 
like a deck storage box, you know, where you put your cushions and what mm -hmm. have you? They tried to chew through that. That didn't fly well with Ron. Um, mm -hmm. They tunnel. I've got planter boxes on the deck. They tunnel in the soil. What? Mm -hmm. that don't, I don't like that because they, they like mm -hmm. dig up then all the roots, if you will, of whatever I might right. want to plant in there. Um, they got into, okay, on the gas grill, there's like, you know, the storage cupboard where you can keep tools and like the brush and, well, uh, your tank obviously fits in there. Mm -hmm. They decided they were going to camp out in the gas grill. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I like hate red, red squirrels. squirrels either. I had one once on the north side. Uh, he came in the chimney. They And I'd see him going in the neighbor's one, but I didn't see him in mine because, of course, you can't see up there. But he came in the chimney, got through, so it must have knocked a brick loose, mm -hmm. and chewed through the drywall and got to a bedroom upstairs that I never used. And all oh of a gosh. sudden, I heard a shelf fall over. Mm -hmm. And here he's in there, and he's running in circles because he can't get back out the same way he got in. And then the cat starts going nuts, and it's like, oh. So I finally, I just, I went in there, I opened the window, and I locked the door. <laughs> and then I called the pest guy, and he came. He took it away in a live trap, and he put one of those guards on the top of the chimney so nothing could get in anymore. But yeah, that was a fiasco. In my yard, I butt up to what would be the town of Wilson. Mm -hmm. And it's all field and it's all woods. And mm -hmm. so um, if we would release said squirrels out in the woods, they'd be right back. They'd come right back, yeah. So, and if that one didn't, because they're territorial, another one would move in mm -hmm. on the other guy's face. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. They are able to, well, we had, um, ash trees mixed in with our evergreens mm -hmm. and so this week the big deal was we had excitement that the, the we had a guy come and cut down these ash trees that were half dead anyways mm -hmm. it's the old emerald ash borer thing and you can see in my neighborhood where which there's a whole lot of dead ash trees so i know they're in the neighborhood so mm -hmm. even though mine weren't necessarily dead dead yet mm -hmm. they were on their way yeah so it was just as well to get out the good news is the one emerald or the one ash tree that we pulled out that was close to my bird feeder because I like my mm -hmm. bird feeder. Um, they can't. They could jump from those branches mm -hmm. to the bird feeder, oh. and then they'd steal the bird mm -hmm. seed. Can't do that anymore because that tree is gone. Oh. So I got rid of ash trees this week. Okay. Now I have logs all over my yard, but Ron mm -hmm. is slowly. You know, taking the chainsaw. Do you have a wood fireplace? Uh, yeah. Oh, so you're going to use those? Oh, up. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will, definitely. He's cool. cutting it up and splitting it and letting it dry for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, we will use it in the fireplace. But um, And we have a fire pit outside, too, that okay. will sit, in, sit out in summer, um, too. And, you know, Kevin and Cora love to do bonfires, mm -hmm. and that's a big deal with them. And, yeah. and they'll do it when it's cold, even. You know, mm -hmm. they just love that. And she, you know, marshmallows, <laughs> you oh, know, give yeah. that kid sugar, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was exciting. So we got okay. rid of the trees cool. this week. Yeah. And he uncovered the patio furniture, but none of the cushions are down because yeah. we, you know, we won't be sitting out there anytime soon. Yeah. Not yet. Um, last weekend, he did sit out a bit. Mm -hmm. Um and it, you know it was nice and some of the chairs don't need cushions so I mean you could sit on those yeah um, so yeah you know it's been mm -hmm. nice getting outside and you know in the front we've got everything all cleaned up as far as you know this just the spring cleanup we could use some mulch but I don't mm -hmm. feel like mulching yeah yeah it's a lot of shit that's just shoveling wood chips I don't want to do that mm -hmm. I'll maybe hire my kid he's got off Ryan has off the week of oh. April 19th, so I might hire him. Oh, okay. And tell him, would you spread my wood chips? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's now would be a really good time to do it. Um, maybe I will. We'll mm -hmm. see. I don't know. Okay. It would give him something to do that week he's off. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, yeah, things are blooming and okay. coming to life at yeah. my house. Yep. 
pretty time of year. Mm -hmm. And there's no big, huge runoff this year. We didn't have really any flooding or anything. Nope. Knock on wood. It's... Well, that's because we didn't have any snow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there. It, it seemed like we had snow on the ground all the time, mm -hmm. but and we had good sized piles, but in the big picture, our snowfall was actually down. Oh yeah, because the early part of the year, yeah, there was nearly nothing. What end of January before we, yeah, really got it bad. Yeah. So, so yeah, works for me. I don't really care mm -hmm. to have mounds of snow, you mm -hmm. know. But like I said, we can still get some. So, yep. and I keep thinking we will. Yep. So, so what you wearing? I am wearing this shawl I showed last week. It is called Ellie, E L L I E sock set shawl. And you know mm -hmm. how you buy uh, a yeah a sock yarn, mm -hmm. and it always has the mini with it. Mm -hmm. Or it can, I mean, right. have that mini with it layers. to, um, you know, do alter, uh, contrasting, to, you know, toes or heels or cuffs or whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, what this pattern does is it takes that mini and you get, mm -hmm. you make short rows in here. So it makes your shawl a little bigger mm -hmm. than a one skein wonder. Sure. I mean, but on the other hand, it's not a lot. And these short mm -hmm. rows were pretty easy to do. Yeah. The rest of it's all garter stitch which I think looks mm -hmm. really nice with a variegated yarn like this. Yeah. And then you've got these dark stripes in there. And it's just fun. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, so I this was my, I, I think I, I think it maybe took me a week, you know, mm -hmm. to knit this thing. It doesn't take long at all. But, you know, okay. I, you know, it's funny. I figure out, I knit, you know, in general, I can tell you about how many yards I knit in a day. You mm -hmm. know, it's weird. You know, like... I can say, okay, well, that's a 500-yard shawl. That'll take me so many days. I mm -hmm. literally did that math. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's weird. I know. You you told me, like, a long time ago that you can knit 400 yards in a week. Yeah, 400 yards a week. That's mm -hmm. like my... And, and actually, okay, that was my... When I was going to school working um, mm -hmm. yardage. Right. I'm I'm over that now. Because, because I spend, Zoom. yeah, be, well, that, um, you know, teaching online, you know, I'll Zoom with people and knit at night, or I don't do it that very often because I'm, I, I'm on, you know, online all day. I don't like mm -hmm. to be online at night when I'm online all day. It's like mm -hmm. I just hate being online all that much. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, there are meetings now that I knit through. There are, mm -hmm. yeah. Like every Wednesday, we have a teacher meeting at noon. I knit through that thing every week. Yeah. You know, right. so, um, and in the afternoon, now I'm done teaching about, eh, 145, two-ish. Mm -hmm. And then I get some things ready for the next day. I, I've kind of got this routine, you know. By 2.15, I'm usually set up, and all of my um, windows that I need for my lesson the next day are all open and in a row. And it's kind of mm -hmm. a, just to get everything all organized so that I can roll out of bed, throw some clothes on, and go teach. <laughs> yep, yep. You don't have that travel time anymore. Uh-uh, uh-uh. you got so much so, more time in your day. Yeah. So I, you know, and, and with not going anywhere at night, like, for example, I'm not bowling on Tuesdays, obviously, this winter. Um, mm -hmm. My team decided, you know what, we're just not going to bowl this year. Take, take mm -hmm. the year off. Um, and so... We haven't, I, you know, I'm home Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. I'm home Wednesday nights. I'm, I'm home Monday nights. So, yeah. I mean, I, I do more than that 400 a week now. Yeah. Okay. A lot more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Speaking of more than 400 yards, what's behind us is due to my dear friend Dawn from yes. Frivolous and Frugal Podcast, she knit a shop sample for me of Stephen West slipping tiles. This is a Stunning. Four, 400 gram, yeah, 400 gram project. So that's four skeins of fingering, by so the way. So that's over 1,600 yards. Yeah, and this is um, three contrast colors, one base color, the light gray. And um, so this is our shop model. And the yarn is all yarn that I dyed. Um, 
This is amazing. And that's what I've been doing this week was dyeing yarn. That's these colors. Actually, you get eight of these total. Four of the gray, two of the dark one, and one of each of the other ones. And it's enough to do the shawl, and you have plenty of leftovers. So, um, yeah, so we have those kits. I sold another one today, so I've sold a couple of them. Um, but you can get them online or in the store. I have some more on the drying rack at home. I dyed them last week, but... So it's in all of the gray with the pinks? Yeah, yeah, I only did the one color way. It's just this one of the samples. You know, when I have samples like this, 90% of the people want whatever the sample is anyway. You know, that's true. They fall in so, love with the shawl. Yeah, so that's all I did. So the next shawl we'll do in a different color way. So, yeah, yeah, but it's a really good value. You know, the kit's out on the website. It's really pretty. It's all the bamboo sock, which is 50 superwash, um, 25 bamboo, and 25 nylon. Wow. And the bamboo is what gives it that drape. Yeah. It's got really good drape. Yeah. Well, it, I, I mean, the, the texture and the, the directionality, and there's so much really pretty about mm -hmm. that shawl. There is. So. Yep. So what have you been working on? Well, um, I'm doing the Malabrigo Temperance. Malabrigo's got this big knit along going on right now. Yep. Um, and this is the shawl that I've started for it. This is just the first one, two, three, four. I think I am just at the beginning of section seven. So. Whoa, their sections are little. Yeah, they're small. But what will happen, okay, let me hold that up, see, okay, so you got a lot of garter stripe down here, yep. and then you've got garter stock and that stripe here. There's always a little section of some, the slip stitch stuff between each section. I personally don't think you see it very well in the shawl, but that's what's in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then this section is a large twisted rib section. Okay. All right. And then after this, you've got garter stripes for a while. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to happen is you reach 201 stitches. All right. And then that's the maximum number of stitches of the shawl. But then what happens is this central spine mm -hmm. takes a detour. So, oh. the, so you stop increasing, but the central st spine shifts over because you increase on one side and decrease on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's in the ah. whatever. So that's what that's I'm knitting, fun. and I love my colors. Yeah, the um, colors are really pretty. This is Gingy, and this one with the, the greens in it is called Primavera, and this one's called Eggplant, the dark one. Yeah. And gorgeous. then there is another, an, uh, so right now, section seven has like 30 rows of, or 30 garter stripes or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then section eight is a little um, slip stitch divider thing, which I don't think you see very well. Mm -hmm. Then section nine is garter with eyelet. Okay. And then section 10 is an, that little slip stitch thing. Uh -huh. And then 11 is garter stripes. And there's like patterns to the stripes so that you go through a rotation of all three colors uh -huh. together. Um, and section 11 is the big other half. So it's like sections one through 10 is barely half the shawl. Mm -hmm. It's when you get to section 11 and in all of those garter stripes that your central spine starts making its shift and you, you get a different shape. Okay. So it's kind of fun. I mean, I'm enjoying the knitting. Okay. This twisted rib, man, purling on a twisted rib. Yuck. Yeah. Because it's purled through the back loop. That okay took forever. Hated that part. Um, but mm -hmm. I did it last night, and it is done. And I don't have okay. to do it anymore. And the rest of the sections are all pretty mindless. You know, and that's mm -hmm. what, I guess I will say that much. There were some issues with stitch count. Um, the pattern, um, I did, I, I should say that I did modify a few things about it. I did not like the central decrease that they were using. They were using a slip one, knit two together, pass the slip stitch over, so that your 
first stitch ends up on top. And mm -hmm. it created a, a, a line, but not, not the kind of line I like. Right. All right? I like this one where you slip two together, and it's is a central mm -hmm. double decrease. Yeah. I like that better. So, I mean, I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is shocking, I know, but I frogged this thing three times and restarted. Three okay. frogs. I have four restarts on it. The other mm -hmm. thing I didn't like about it was they kept telling you to carry your yarns up. Well, uh -huh. it's, I'm not going to carry yarn up through a, a a whole section of one color that's like 30 some odd rows long. No way. Yeah, right. So I modified one, the carry up instructions, because along my side where I was carrying, I was getting like you could see like a float for lack of a better word. You could see sure. the yarn that it was carried up and it was because of the way their instructions were written. So I modified that. I modified. I thought you were gonna put an I cord on that. I did, I hated it. Oh. That was one okay. of my frogs. Okay. I hated it. Um, I did, I thought I would do um, the I cord that I use a lot, um, that I learned from Helen Stewart's. On the right side, it's knit, slip, knit. And on the wrong side, it's slip, knit, slip. Oh. That's her okay. eye cord that she puts on. Like So like my blanket that, you know, I've got sitting out there forever. Yeah. That's, the, that's what makes that eye cord around that blanket. Mm -hmm. And around that blanket, I love that eye cord. I thought it looked great. Mm -hmm. So I did, that's what I was doing. And what was happening is like all along in here, this edge was just simply too tight. Oh, okay. So now what I'm doing is they, Malabrico's pattern was to knit front and back on the first stitch. No, mm -hmm. that created the tightness when you knit front and back on that because getting two stitches into one tightens your yarn up. Right. So now what I did was I knit the first stitch, then did the knit front and back. Mm -hmm. that and makes more sense. that makes much more sense. And like here, you can see where I'm carrying my yarn but uh -huh. it's not as obvious. Right. Because on my on the roll that I need to catch it. See like um mm -hmm. in this section it's two rows. So you're not mm -hmm. really, you know, you alternate colors right away. But this one you have that four row. So the, the, you had to pay attention to what you were doing with that yarn. Mhm. Mm and now mine is kind of like tucking nicely along that side. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's a nice smooth edge. Yeah. You know that Knit front and back would give you that. Yeah, that's and that's what it was doing. I hated it. So yeah. for I, I mean, I literally I started with the pattern instructions. Hated that. Mm -hmm. Went to the I cord. Hated that. Okay. Um. Went to a different kind. Di I I did went back to a different kind of catch mechanism. Didn't like that. So okay. finally, this is my fourth attempt. Okay. And now I'm happy with it. Good. So. Whatever. Yeah. So I've been working on this, um, okay. alternating with my t-shirt. Okay. Now this thing, okay, I'm going to tell you, I do not like the way this looks unblocked. Uh -huh. Okay? I don't. And I'm telling myself to get over it because I liked my swatch. Yeah. After you blocked it. After I blocked it, I liked my swatch. So right. you got to kind of bear with it. Here yeah. is my t-shirt, okay. you know, and... It's got some thick and thin going on. You can see uh -huh. oh, there's some Oops, patterning. It's off a little, too. Oh, crap. That happens so much. You need those foam things on Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm stubborn. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm yeah. stubborn. All right, there we go. Yeah. That usually works. Anyways, so I've got the sleeves off. My sleeves are on my holder. And then I'm into the cables here oh, on the side. Oh, in the armpit, yeah. Yeah, in the armpit, there's cables going all the way down. Okay. So that's what I'm working on now. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty mindless now, too, except for those cables. But it, the mm -hmm. cable pattern is a 12-row repeat with a two twists on the first six and then the twist on the second six. Okay. So, yeah. But like, yeah, you know, this is just really bumpy and mm -hmm. weird texture. That's kind of the look of linen, though. I'm, I like that look. I don't dislike the look. Mm -hmm. I just want a smoother look. I mean, yeah, like your okay. swatch. My swatch is in here. 
Look how much nicer. Here's my beautiful swatch. All right, I love that look. This yarn, this fabric does not look like that. No. This will smooth out. I know mm -hmm. that. I know, I know this yarn will have a very different appearance after mm -hmm. I wash it. Right. And, okay, here you go. If you don't swatch, you don't know. You don't know that, right. Um, if I would have not swatched and not known what this yarn is going to do after I wash it, I mean, this went in the dryer even. So I know mm -hmm. I can take this yarn, take it, throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer, because that's what I did with this. Mm -hmm. And this will turn out just make this lovely, lovely fabric. Um, you wouldn't know that. And I would yeah, probably look probably at this. Yeah, you probably have a UFO right now. Yes, I would. Yes, yeah. I would have probably looked at that, frogged it, done I would have given up on it. Mm -hmm. But I know what it's going to do. Yeah. And so... And that's Zooey. Yeah, this is Zooey. And it's so soft. It has beautiful drape. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous t-shirt when it's done. Cool. But Very nice. right now, it's just ugly. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. I alternate. So yesterday I worked on the shawl, so today I'm working on this. Okay. And then tomorrow I'll go back to the shawl. That's it's the only way. Then what will happen is like if I get down to, you know, the last repeat or two of the cable pattern, then I'll say, okay, that's it. I'm finishing it. Yeah. Right. That's what I'll do. Yeah, because the sleeves won't be much. No. They're short sleeves. They're short sleeves. And I could, the way this pattern is written, I could actually put this back on my needles and bind it off if I, you know. Yeah. So that's actually what I'm going to do. When I get the body done, I am going mm -hmm. to put it on and decide if I like where those sleeves come. Yeah, I don't like my jiggle to show. So well, I that's like kind of what I'm thinking, too. My, if my jiggle shows, that's exactly what mm -hmm. I'll base that decision on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I'll, maybe mm -hmm. I'll bind them off and not do sleeves. I do think I'll have enough yarn because this is like mm -hmm. what's left of ball two. And I got okay. four, so. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have enough, I know where to find it. So. You know where to find <laughs> it. Yep. Yeah. Well, what I but. was doing was more paper piecing. This one I, I started last night. Fussy cut the flowers. <sighs> I love that when you call it fussy cutting. And uh, I have the other ones. So they all look like this. Mm. And uh, the orange center, of course, you don't need to fussy cut. This part you, you cut. I made this to, to go in here like this to fill out the hexagon when it's done. I mean, you could do the little diamond or you could just keep making hexagons and let them interlock into each other. You, you have your choice. But on this one, I decided to do this because I'm going to do another mug rug like I did before. Um, but I'll probably put binding on this one. The other one, I did a casing. Yeah. So. I love this. Yeah, it's fun. Something I can do anyway. Okay. When I am teaching geometry, uh huh. And you take these are pattern block shapes. All right, mm -hmm. little math lesson. And when you take one of these things and you match that up, oh, I got to do it the right way here. You match these up, and you look at how the different angles work together. It's called tessellating. Yes, these and, are all tessellating shapes. That and, and it's so much fun. All... And I am looking at you talk about this, and I'm thinking to myself. Oh, I teach that in a couple yep, of weeks. Yep, yep. This is fourth grade math, folks. <laughs> yeah, and it's all, I use all 60 degree angles on these. Yep. And when I do the diamond ones, like that very first one I had, those are 60 degree diamonds. There's a bunch of other patterns where they'll use the pentagon. And then there's also some that are eight sided, which I don't know what angle that is. Must be half a 45, right? Would be no, there's a formula for this. Okay. But there's octagon ones, too. Not as frequent. The hexes are the most common. The 60-degree diamonds are well, very Well, that's common. because that's the easiest shape to tessellate. And it's because yeah. of the divisibility and multipliability of the 60-degree mm -hmm. angle. Right. And you can get... 
Like if you cut these diamonds in half, they're equilateral triangles. Right. And that doesn't work in the other angles, but it does in these. Well, with the with the octagon, you can put squares. So I'm thinking that the octagon angles are going to be 125 degrees. Oh, maybe. Okay. Or 122. 120 degree, maybe. No. Because it, it has to be half of 45. Which is nice. Yeah. And, and what will tessellate with an octagon like that will be a square. Mm -hmm. That's what, and, and that's also what will tessellate. Squares mm -hmm. will tessellate better with a pentagon as well. Oh, I love yeah. pattern block shapes. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is all hexes. So far, everything I'm doing is 60 degree angles. That's the only angle I've been using on my ruler. Because these I cut out. These I printed and cut them out from a printed hexi. Mm -hmm. But these I cut out on my own with the quilting ruler, the diamond shape. So yeah, and I have, you'll see it right there. All that stuff there is all um, supplies for English paper piece. <laughs> oh, I have in the store. <laughs> she gets a new thing to do and so do we. <laughs> yep, 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 I have lots of stuff there now. I got the glue stick pens and I got some of the papers that you, you know, that are pre-cut. You don't have to cut them out yourself like I did on these. Um, there's a needle threader. There's the fancy tulip needles, the Hiroshima. Mm. Not, it wasn't Hiroshima because there was no, uh, it was just Hiroshima. Um, okay. And let's see, I got some acrylic templates. I got a, only one pattern. Oh, and those magnet things that you use instead of pins, glue sticks, needles. Yeah, so um, I have a lot of supplies. Only about half my order came in, though. That is very much like the yarn, where about half the supplies you order aren't coming in. Slow boat from China. Or, yeah. or stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, yep. You know, and... and the, out on the coast of California, there's still ships sitting out there. Yeah, yeah, I heard there is two in um, Washington, but Seattle, Port of Seattle is oh, a big one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is a huge port. Yeah, so, yeah, so about half my stuff came in. Well, speaking of stuff coming in. Yeah, she's got stuff that came in. Uh, I got another color of Marmel. I think I showed a bunch of other colors already. Mm -hmm. Now I have four colors have come in so far. This pattern is a shawl. Oh, that, that is pretty. You get the pattern free if you buy the yarn. I don't have it on the website. If you order the Marmel on the website and you want this pattern, put a note. Put a note in the notes field and I will put it in. Um, and then I got some uh, fabrics, Tula Pink. Who doesn't love Tula and her bright colors? I got some charm packs. These have the hexes, um, the dots and stripes, I think. There's a picture on, there's not one on here, but there's a picture on the website of all the ones in there. And then I got several bolts of her line work collection. I didn't bring them all. This is the panda. That's so cute. Pandemonium, I think this one's called. But yeah, there's several, there's several bolt, bolts. They're all mostly black and white. Um, there's a skunk, a zebra, um, a peacock, which you wouldn't think of for black and white. But it's got little little bits of color, just like this has little bits of color in it. You know, it's and I pretty. was looking at this. Okay, Cora's bedroom is like bright pink. Uh huh. Like like that yarn pink. Okay. Okay. I mean, these chairs pink. This pink. Uh huh. Bright bright pink walls, and her curtains are black and white. With pink, mm -hmm. flat, you know, so I'm looking at that fabric and I'm thinking, that would make curtains, you know, for a kid's mm -hmm. bedroom. It really would be cool. Yeah. And um, not everything is used for quilting, you know. No, but you know what? I did see somebody um, on Facebook took this fabric and did English paper piecing. So where I have this flower, it was Fussy panda cutting, heads all the way around. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, that whole fussy cutting thing I think is funny. Uh -huh. So, and yeah, and I have another bolt of the that hexagon, but the black one. Oh, that's just With, yeah. They're they're all on the front counter, so they're all yeah. pretty. I saw them. Yep. So that came in. 
I think uh, that's it, because we showed the Sueno last week, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're all caught up on what came in. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Plus, all, well, mostly it was all those things. That, that took a long time to price all those little doodads. Well, and getting it up on the website, too, Yeah, I would think. Yeah. You know, it's, it, yeah, you got to check it all in in the system, in the inventory uh -huh. system, put all the stickers on it, hang it up, and then, of yeah. course, then it's getting on the website, and right. yeah, there's a lot of work involved. Yeah. But. And I, well, I have some thread sets, too. Um, those are on the website, too. But, yeah. I have cool. a new section on the website for English paper piecing, too. So oh, that's really? where all those will be in. Oh, fun. Yep. Her new hobby. Yeah. Well, can't knit, so might as well. Right, right. And, you know, just like the rotary cutter and the old stuff, there's always a new invention that makes stuff easier. And glue sticking these papers down, for me, is what did it. So, you know, you can just use that washable glue. And I have had, you know, one or two that you go to take it off, and it, it's sticky. And I just, like, get it a little damp, like get my finger wet and rub it on there, and boom, it comes right off. Well, that's cool. And I can pull the papers out. And some of the stuff that is on back order for the notions was you can get papers that are iron-on and water-soluble. So those you wouldn't have to take out. Wow. Yeah. So watch. Hopefully they'll be here soon. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now to the business. I decided I like putting that name here at the bottom. <laughs> so here is the winner. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> and that will, uh, I'll wait to draw it till I'm publishing, so you get an extra day or two to um, get your name in there in the comments. Um, we're going to do it again this week. If you subscribe, or if you're already subscribed, you don't have to do it again. There was some confusion about that. You only have to subscribe once. But you got to like. But you have to like, put the thumbs up or thumbs down, and make a comment. Yes. And so. then you'll be in the drawing for a $10 gift certificate. Last week's winner came in today and spent hers. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you can spend it online or in person. It and works that system way. now works. So we yep, got that. Yep. That's good to know. Yep. Yeah, she got the email. She just uh, showed me her phone. And I got the gift card off of her phone when oh, she cool. came in. Yeah, it worked real nice. We're just, you know, these old broads embracing that technology oh, yeah. stuff. Yep. Like, let me tell you, we are getting good. Yeah, ah! yeah. So. Well, you know, I kind of chuckle about that. This whole teaching online thing mm -hmm. has taught me plenty. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and it was so funny. I, in the pest control world, Ron uses forms to, you know, like, if somebody needs a, an inspection for, like, a, a, a purchase of a house, it's a form. Mm -hmm. And... Um, or it, like signs up for an annual contract. It's a form and he uses three-part forms, you know, but with a three-part form these days going and getting those printed It's not cheap, right? You know, and um, He said to me the other day You know really would be nice if I could just have this online It'd be so much easier to fill in and the funny part about it is I looked at him and I said I know how to digitize that for you now. Mm -hmm. I would not have known how to do it, say, a year mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. But how to digitize that form now? I've learned how to do that because all of the stuff that I used to do for school, on paper, I'm doing digitally. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, yeah, now I know how to do that. And I thought it was really funny that I learned that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I maybe wouldn't have known how to do this before, but I can do it now. What do you use? Google Forms? Um, no, I would probably use slides and I would take, um, a photocopy of the image. I'd scan the image and mm -hmm. then in Google slides, take that, adjust my slide size. So it's one, you know, like instead mm -hmm. of like a full presentation, you got one slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then you take that form and wherever those, um, boxes have to be filled in, it's just a text box. Oh, Okay. And then you just save that, and mm -hmm. you can fill in, you know, you just save your master copy, and then every mm -hmm. time you use the form, you just fill in the text boxes. Sure, sure. And then can you save it as a PDF? Yes. There you go. 
Yes, you can yeah. save it as a PDF. You can print yeah. multiple copies. You can once you it's know. a PDF, you can email it to anybody. Yeah. So I cool. know how to do that now. All I would right. not have done that or known uh -huh. how to do that a year ago. But okay, you know, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Yes, you can. So not that I need this stuff anymore. No, no, because you're retired. I'm retiring. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So yes, I have till June, mm -hmm. and then I'll be unemployed. First time in, oh my gosh, I don't know how many years. So mm -hmm. that's kind of scary. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm excited. I'm counting down the days till the end of school just yeah. because. Yeah. But I'm not counting them. I'm making them count. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Oh my gosh. I it guess seems it seems like it's been two minutes, but it's been 40 minutes. We talk fast, apparently. I guess. <laughs> Okay. All right. All we'll right. see y'all next week, folks. Bye-bye.